In today's video, we're going to be looking at three things. We're going to be looking at replacing the plastic gears in the gearbox for metal. Uh, we're going to be replacing the motor with a Holmes Hobbies Crawlmaster Sport. And we're also going to be replacing the skid plate with an aluminium one. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Hey folks and welcome to the video. Uh, like I said, we're going to be doing three things today. Uh, we're looking at replacing the aluminium skid plate because uh, that's what holds the gearbox on. And as we are looking at replacing the plastic gears for the set of metal gears, uh, the gearbox is coming out anyway, so we may as well replace that slider at the same time. I've had it sitting in the drawer for a few weeks now, uh, waiting for this. Um, so rather than ripping it all out two or three times, uh, we'll just do it once. And uh, again, while we've got the gearbox out, uh, we're going to be replacing the stock motor with the Holmes Hobbies Crawlmaster Sport. Uh, I've gone for the 12 turn uh, in the hope of uh, just a little bit of wheel speed still, uh, but some extra smoothness. Uh, these are supposed to be really good smooth motor for uh, a, a sealed can brush motor. Um, apologies in advance about the voice. Uh, I've had a stinking cold all week. Uh, just about recovered now, but uh, sound rough still. I understand that. So apologies if that comes over bad. Um, but without any further ado, we will get stuck straight in. Okay, it's Phil from the future here. Uh, just a warning at this stage, this does get to be quite a long video. I've edited it down as much as I can, but it's still over half an hour. Uh, so I will put chapter marks uh, on this video in YouTube and uh, links to those chapter points in the description below. Uh, so you can jump to the bit that you find most relevant to you. Or of course, uh, do feel free to watch all the way through. So we're ready to get started. Um, I don't have a particularly elaborate camera setup. Uh, I do film these on my phone. Uh, it is on a tripod, but that tripod is right in the way. So I will do my level best uh, to get as much of this on film as possible so that you can see what we're doing here. Um, but I do apologize in advance if there are any bits you can't quite see. By all means, if you want to drop a, a note in the comments about any bits that you want to see a bit more closely, um, I'll endeavor to try and sort that out afterwards. Um, but for now, let's, let's make a start and see how we get on. Okay, so uh, let's get to the receiver box. We just need to unscrew And then these four. So the receiver box should now be loose underneath. Uh, I'm going to take these bottom four bolts out while it's upside down. And while I'm here again, I'm going to remove those uh, lower links so that we can swap this out. Uh, for those of you who have been uh, chatting with me in the comments on previous videos about the uh, wheel weights, getting a lovely view of the very tight clearance that we have there. Um, I probably didn't need to shave any off the outer edge. Actually, I think the only bit I needed to shave off was the hub. A bit around the hub but uh, I think given the tightness of those tolerances it probably didn't hurt just to take a little bit off around the outer edge as well okay so that's the all the lower links done which is going to make things a little bit awkward uh, and the reason we undid this one uh, is that there is a screw hiding under here which also screws into the receiver box right so when we flip over we should have a nice floating around receiver box uh, but our gearbox should still be pretty much in place because of those two screws from the side uh, we are going to need to come back underneath here uh, a little bit later just to undo three screws on each side to remove this skid pan 
In fact, while we're here, let's just do that. Of course, if you're not replacing the skid plate, you don't have to do any of this. All you would have needed to do to remove the gearbox is those four screws there and then the two inside. We need to undo the dry shaft pins while we're here as well and take those out. So there is one more screw holding this in place, which is on the inside. Uh, so we'll get that in a second. Uh, but that's pretty much that whole thing now, ready to remove as soon as we undo that other screw. And also we've taken out everything uh, from underneath that we're gonna need to be able to uh, access the gearbox and get the gearbox up. Okay, so now as you can see, our receiver box is nice and loose, but we don't have to crack it open. So we don't have to break the, the seal or anything like that. Uh, but as you can see, there is uh, a screw just down here, which is one of those screws holding the gearbox into place. And then there's another on the other side, which I'll show you in a second. So we'll pop this out. Uh, we do need to remove the, or disconnect the servo from the, um, the two speed transmission. We'll just pop off. Yeah, easier to just pop the ball cap off. Okay. Okay, and that other side, the screw that's the last screw that's holding the gearbox in place uh, is obscured by this servo. So that servo has got to come up first. I'm going to leave that all connected, just undo the, the securing braces, hopefully be able to get in underneath. Yeah, that worked nicely. There we go. So unless I've completely misread things, which I don't think I have, I uh, should now be able to just lift that gearbox out. Perhaps I should have left the skid plate in place because they are located in there. There we go. So there is our gearbox. Uh, obviously it's still connected at the moment. I need to undo that solder. And then what we can do is undo this screw and that will allow our skid plate to come free. So there we go, plastic skid plate, that can go straight in the spare parts bin. Thank you for your honorable service. Okay, so I think I mentioned this little fella last time. This is a, a TS100 soldering iron. Um, power, I power it off a, a four or five S LiPo. Fantastic, really good. If you need to do any field repairs, these things are amazing. Uh, they're quite happily, they'll quite happily solder into kind of 12 gauge wire, no problem. Um, you know, I solder up XT60s with these all the time. It's great. Just carefully move that out of the way. Make sure that's not going to fall off when I do this. Which it did. There we go. So there's our motor and gearbox combination. We'll get the truck out of the way. Get close in on this. Okay, so we've got our gearbox now. Um, the first thing we need to do, obviously, is remove the motor from that. Now that's two screws here. Um, there is a, a little cover here actually that's very useful um, for setting up the mesh so I'm just going to pop that off first so if you're ever changing the motor on its own uh, or the pinion or anything like that and you don't want to take the whole gearbox out uh, you can just pop that out and obviously then you've got access to the motor you can see the mesh there So this has been well thread locked, which is nice to see. Either that or it's rusted into place, who knows. So I'm not intending on changing the pinion. Uh, so I'm hoping that this will just mesh up nicely. But obviously if you weren't removing the gearbox, you just wanted to change the motor or the pinion, 
uh, if you undid those two screws and that little cover, then you would be able to kind of get that and turn it out. The two, mo the two motor mount screws. I wonder if that will come off without removing the pinion. That would be interesting. But it does at least allow us to get into there. So just release the grub screw on the pinion carefully. Oh, that's it nice and tight. And there's our pinion. Okay, that is a, a metal metal gear. So I will be taking that that back that out fully and just putting a bit of thread lock in there when we come to replace that. But essentially that's it, that's our motor out. So can't really see a huge amount of difference between the two. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure this is only a three slot. Uh, the Holmes is a five slot that I've particularly bought. But one noticeable difference obviously uh, is the bearing here where the motor shaft comes out. That's gonna make things run smoother. Uh, be more efficient here we've just got a brass bushing and I'm not sure if that's a bearing or a bushing but again that's just a bushing definitely just a bushing at that end so there we go that's the old one out I'm going to keep that to one side uh, either keep it as a spare or I have a funny feeling it might go in the next project and the homes can go in its place okay so the thread lock I use is uh, blue loctite same as most people but I actually use the stick because uh, I find it really convenient and much less messy. Uh, kind of surface rust there is on there. So we'll just put just a tiny little dab of that on there. Don't need a lot. Even that's probably too much. I don't know if you can see that very well. Even that's probably too much. That is the downside of the stick. It is quite tricky to uh, get a small amount out. Actually, no, that's okay. That's good. Pop the motor mount in first, otherwise it's not going to mount. And then we'll put our pinion on, nip that up for now, so it just doesn't fall off. Uh, but then we'll line it up properly uh, as we go along. And we can mount the motor with the two screws. So again, we are going into metal. So dab of thread lock. Okay, so we'll cinch that up. And we'll set that to one side for now. Okay, so now we're gonna crack open this bad boy and see what we've got. So quite a few screws in here. Um, so we've got three holding this uh, Final drive plate, I think that is basically. Um, then we've got another one, two, three, holding the the two-speed transmission elements and the the main gear there. I'm not sure whether we need to remove this. We'll find out in a minute. Completely forgot that I recently got some hex bits for my drill, so that should make life a bit quicker. Oh, look at all that plasticky goodness. Oh, there is a little bit of grease in there. Not a huge amount though. doing is dismantling gears being careful not to lose the pins and then we're going to put them back in again of course the sensible way to do this is to find the matching gears at the same time Okay, so we'll lay out a total of six gears. We're going to be reusing any bearings out of the 
existing gears, basically just swapping them out. Simple as that. So we'll find the bearing, uh, find the <coughs> find the gears that match, size for size and type for type. So that's slotted at the back there. So that one will go back on there. Pop that there. Uh, so we need to take the slipper clutch mechanism off, which is a bit of a pain. Okay, and it has to be said, I'm being a shining example here of why you really should have the manual with you. Um, because I haven't paid nearly enough attention to this as I've taken it apart. So I'm starting to struggle to remember where all the gears go already. Right, so, so there's a little washer in the bottom there that's stuck to the bearing uh, so what i'm going to do in fact there's one on both sides I'll give that a bit of a wipe out get rid of some of that old grease uh, and then we'll start assembling the new stuff i'm going to try and go back in the same order so from the slipper clutch through do it that way makes makes sense to me to do it that way so I'll put the bearings back in there. And then we've got all of our gears now, all with the bearings in that they need to have, basically completely unassembled. So I'm gonna use the instruction manual now to just reassemble that gearbox. Because we were doing a full strip down, uh, it was not a, an easy job to just determine which ones go where from my standard method, which is, refitting being the reverse of removal. So this axle with a bearing uh, is gonna slot into our this particular piece here, the number for which I have somewhere. Then on the other side of this, we're gonna slot our selector. So that's our gear shift selector. And then on the other side of that, we're gonna have our here with two bearings, one either side, uh, and that's obviously what shifts and locks up whichever gear we're in. Okay, so once we've got those assembled, we can pop those back together. Uh, you do make, this shifter is sided, so make sure you've got the sort of triangular side matching <clears throat> the triangular side there. Slide it on all into place and then we can do that little screw back into there with a tiny bit of thread lock because it is screwing into metal. We'll snug that down and that's it. So that section's reassembled and that's quite nice because that holds that section together quite well. Uh, so now I'm going to just grease these two gears up a little bit. Those two are greased up. Hopefully that's going to stay in focus long enough to see. There we go. And that's about as much as I'm going to put in there. And that'll all mesh in nicely as we build up the next section. And we'll build the other parts of our gearbox. So we have this one. This uh, gear rod has got three, I don't know if they'll come through, three pin holes for them. And obviously the three pins. Okay, so for these two, this is our first one. Get that to locate nicely. So that's our first one. Then we need to put a pin in the middle, middle slot, or middle hole. This gear, whatever this gear is, goes over that one. So once these are assembled, this slots in alongside here like so and then we can add a little bit of grease to those but they will probably grease up quite nicely as they mesh okay and at that point we can 
pop our two little washers back over here, one on that side, one on that side, and they are going to go into here. And hopefully that will all slot together nicely. For some reason it's not. There we go. There we go. And at that point, I am just going to put a couple of screws back into that case because I don't want it coming apart again uh, until I'm ready for it to. Okay, so that's half of our gearbox back together. That's our two speed section. So then we want our out drive section. <clears throat> So we have another pin to locate in there, which is gonna need the tweezers. My fingers are too fat for it. Okay, so that's in there. We'll find our only gear with a pin drive on it. So that makes that a little bit easier. Okay, the one with the bearings on should slot nicely over there into that one. There we go, that's good. So now we've got our three final drive gears ready to go. Get those greased up. So making sure we've got our bearings in place. We'll pop that back on. Make sure we get our drive shaft through nicely. There it is. And it's very, very hard to keep this on camera. So I do apologize. I'm really not very good at this bit. So the long screw goes through the bottom and into the other half, the, gear, the gearing part of the gearbox. And there we have it, probably the worst demonstration of a gearbox build ever. But all I can say really is if, if you've got your instruction manual handy, handy, you can't go wrong. So we'll put our slipper clutch assembly back together. So we have a plate first. We have a gear. And we have another plate, we have a washer, a bearing, another washer, apologies the camera battery ran out or the phone battery ran out uh, part way through that assembly. So I have as previously mounted the motor back onto the, the motor mount. Uh, this is on a sliding mount, but actually the way that they locate doesn't really give you much room for adjustment, to be perfectly honest. So we want to get those meshed up. And that was basically flush last time. And that feels to me about right. Now, normally, I think the way to do this is to use a piece of paper. And this is just to make sure the gears mesh nicely, but don't bind. So we'll put our piece of paper in there like so and hold that in place and then we'll slide a motor in, pop that into place and screw those down. So we do need a bit of Loctite on the screws so we'll push that up against there. Tighten it down at that point. Get it cinched up nicely. And then just pull that out. That should give us a good mesh. So the pinion's a little bit too far out. 
So we need to really carefully, because we don't want to lose it off that flat spot. So just loosen it off just enough to be able to move it. Line it up nicely. I think hopefully you'll be able to see in there. They're nicely lined up. Oh, I've moved it. There we go. So they're nicely lined up and then just snug that down again onto that, making sure it stays on that flat spot of the motor shaft. And then we'll replace this little pinion cover. Two and a half. And there we have it. So we've got our rebuilt gearbox, all metal gears, <clears throat> new motor mounted, ready to go. We can put that assembly back on. Now I'm going to put the aluminium skid plate in place first, um, which you know you saw the way we removed that. So putting it back in is is literally the good old fashioned reverse of that. So I'll do that uh, probably off camera, uh, and then we'll be ready to remount the gearbox, solder up the motor, test everything out, make sure the polarity is right, and uh, make sure. The gear selector still works as it should do. Okay, so we've reinstalled the uh, skid plate. Uh, like I said, I did that off camera because the batteries are about had it. Um, so charged it up a bit, so hopefully we'll be good to go. Remounted the links. Um, we're just going to refit the gearbox now, and then we can reconnect the drive shafts, solder up the motor, and we're good to go. Okay, so remounting the gearbox obviously is going to be a pretty straightforward task. Uh, it's the four screws from underneath. And the two from the side. So I'm actually going to start by just locating it into place and lining up for those two screws at the side because they're the ones I'm going to put in first. Oh, so the one, <laughs> the one under the servo is still handily there. Sorry, camera stopped again. So I've tightened up the screws on both sides. Up underneath, tighten the screws in from underneath. Okay, so I am still gonna remount the shielding. Now we are going into metal here, but we're going straight through it and into plastic on the other side, so. We don't actually need any thread lock. Oops. Right, and then now we've got all four into place. We'll cinch those down in a star or corner pan. our gearbox nicely cinched into place. So definitely one of my top tips is making sure your out feed, whatever it's called, that goes onto the drive shaft uh, is properly lined up so that you can put the pin back in when you've finished because I didn't do that and what a fast it's been. Okay, so we have now got the gearboxes all back in place, all connected back up. Um, the diffs are currently locked, which is a little bit annoying, uh, but that's my own fault because I left them set like that. Uh, so we're all ready to go. I'm pretty confident we've got a nice gear mesh in there. Uh, everything seems to be running as it should do. So I'm just going to solder up the motor now. Um, and I'll see if I can get you a slightly better view than I did last time of that job. And, uh, and then we should be good to test. So fingers crossed. So our positive wire is going to go on this side this time because the, the positive on the crawl master is on the opposite side and the negative will go here. So first we want to heat the soldering iron up, which I've neglected to do. But this is the beauty of the TS100. Let's show you this because it's worth seeing. Okay, so it's booted up. Press the button to heat. Uh, 
at 300 degrees after about 10 seconds and I work at 400 and that's ready to go after about 12 or 15 seconds. Fantastic, fantastic little thing. Okay, so our yellow is our positive. It's nicely tinned. I should be able to turn that into place. Just apply some heat to both pieces and they should flow together nicely. That's exactly what they've done. That's good. And we'll do the same on this side. Hold that in place until it's definitely cooled. Okay, and now we've got two nice solid connections. Only one very slightly melted shock mount. So, something I used to use a lot, and well, still use a lot of in uh, the drone world is this. This is called a smoke stopper. So if you've been doing a little bit of soldering, um, it's definitely worth, the first time you plug in a battery, have one of these in between. What this will do, if there's a short in the system, because you've messed up with the soldering, and let's face it, we can all make mistakes. Um, if there is a short there, it will pull the current quickly. This will see, this will recognize that and it will cut off, saving your battery from setting fire or saving your components from setting fire. So really useful tool. There are three or four pounds, definitely worth getting. So we're powered on over there. That's fine. We've got a nice green light. Let's power on just to make sure. Okay, we're all good. So we'll power off again. So no issues there. However, when you are actually then testing, when it starts to draw current, when it starts to draw current normally, uh, it thinks that's a short and will break. Okay. Okay, well that's good, they're going the right way. But currently, super slow, excellent. Reverse is okay. See the reverse lights coming on occasionally there. And then, well, there's enough voltage. That seems to be going through. It's a little bit noisier than it used to be. But all good. Everything's working as it should do. Happy days. Only thing left to do now is get out and test it. So hopefully we'll be able to do that tomorrow. Uh, and then we can put this film together and see what we think. So that'll just about wrap it up for this video. Uh, apologies that it has been so long, but it was quite a long job. I don't think we could have avoided that really. Um, we'll leave with some running video from uh, my tests with the Sherpa with the new motor and the metal gears. Uh, it's very much a maintenance upgrade, I think really, particularly the metal gears. I don't think there's any performance benefit from it. Uh, the new motor, uh, the Home Toby motor, seems to be really nice and smooth. Uh, it's got a nice slow, uh, crawl speed which hopefully you can see on some of these climbs um, drag brakes good generally very happy with that uh, it is a little bit faster um, so top end now in in second gear has gone up to about 16 and a half miles an hour from about 12 and a half before so that's an improvement if you want a bit of speed but it's still got lots of low end control so thanks again for watching um, Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this content useful. Uh, we'll have a, another video shortly with some new shocks and uh, some wonderful hair bun tire foams, uh, which are uh, surprisingly good for the four pounds that they cost. Uh, so uh, hopefully you'll join us again for that one. See you soon.